Standard of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Valley Sunset, another adventure of George Valentine. Personal notice, change is my stock and trade. If you worry about your life, but worry even more about your death, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Dear Mr. Valentine, I mustn't let anyone know that I'm writing to you, but they're all busy repairing one of the winery trucks tonight, and I've sneaked off to the safety of my childhood dollhouse. They say that some people can feel death like dogs can or coyotes. Well, I know that my uncle will die sooner or later. But what if my own brother should kill him? Or if he should kill my brother? Mr. Valentine, it's like when the dust lies in the grapevine so thick you can't tell what's underneath. Whether there's ripening fruit or a rattlesnake. But there is something horrible that I can't find out alone. Because after all, I am only a prisoner in this strange world. And it's signed... Rachel Agagenik. Uh-huh. Any address, Brooksy? Yeah, well, let's see. It's on the back with the with a little map. The closest city is Fresno, I guess. Uh-huh. 60 or 70 miles, care of Valley Sunset Wineries. Because, after all, I am only a prisoner in this strange world. Uh-huh. Valley Sunset. Sunset? Valley sunset? <laughs> what do you expect out of Hades, my friend? Road signs? Hades? <laughs> sure, sure. Whose hinges it is hotter than... <laughs> yeah, now look, I'm sorry I flagged you down, but... But uh, why? I'm happy. I noticed you were carrying very valuable freight. Uh, what's that? Hello, goddess. Oh, oh hello. <laughs> On a day like today, you look better than a cold beer. <laughs> Yes, well, uh, get your foot off the brass rail. <laughs> What's the matter? Haven't I got time to say any more before your boyfriend hits me? <laughs> okay, okay, smart boy. Just cool off and tell us where we are, huh? The world, United States, heaven, valley sunset. What? A Gajanik property. You've been on it for the last five miles. Yeah, but we haven't seen the winery or the ranch house or... You won't for another five miles straight ahead. Oh, I see. A small-type farm. Yes, indeed. The kingdom of limbo. Irrigated by the sweat of man. Dedicated to the sweat of the great. Do you ever make sense? But of course not. I'm a poet. <laughs> My name is Agajnik. Well, oh. well, Mr. Agajnik. Huh? <laughs> it's a common name. Lots of us are on. Uh, Mr. Agajnik, aren't there any, uh, muses right here on your ranch? Women? <laughs> Yes, yes. Exactly one, dear lady. The beautiful Rachel. Rachel Agajanik? Mm hmm. The romantic type, too. Your sister? No, no, indeed. Niece. But I'll tell you a tragic secret, my friend. Rachel is only 14 years old. childhood has passed me, Mr. Valentine. I'm not like other girls. I had to make you think I was a woman to get you here. I had to make you realize my awful plight. <laughs> yes, your awful plight. Uh, now look, Rachel, you said you were a prisoner. What do we find? You live in a beautiful house. You've got one of the finest record collections I've ever seen. But nobody comes the to the house. The dress you have on is at least sex for Avenue. But I don't like the color. I didn't pick it out. It isn't proper for a girl my age. Who says so? Well, that's the way it was in his old country, I guess. He picks out everything for everybody. He? Joseph, the oldest, the head of the family. Oh, the old-fashioned patriarch, huh? My uncle, Mr. Valentine. Your... Oh, now, don't tell me Joseph has black hair and is tall and has a crooked smile. No, 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 that's my uncle Silvio Agajanik. Silvio? Uh, wouldn't you know, the poet. He is a poet. Or at least he had a poem published once. Uncle Joseph is awfully proud of him. Yeah, well, Rachel... Silvio does lots of things. He doesn't waste his time on the farm. And, you know, 
He's the only one who ever pays any attention to me. He, he's a romantic kind of person. Sort of exciting, don't you think? Yeah, now look, you said your uncle was going to kill your brother or vice versa. Uncle Joseph and my brother Dimitro. But you haven't said... And Dimitro's any... different, too. He never talks. He just works. And he hates. And he went to agricultural college. Hey, what? Oh, never mind. Why? Why? What's happened that makes you think all this? The way they've looked at each other the past few days. Dimitro and Joseph and poor Silvio... It's nothing definite, Mr. Valentine, but I feel it. Wait, look, Rachel. And it feels horrible. It does. I'm not inventing it. I'm not lying. I don't want it to be there. It's like my music, Mr. Valentine. That record was Debussy, and it's wonderful. I love it. But I don't want to now. Listen. This is the only record like this I've got. I want to go swimming in the irrigation ditches like the other kids around here do. I want to see a football game at the Union High School. I want to be like the other children. Rachel! Joseph, no, don't. Uncle Joseph, please, please, don't. It is not good music. Oh, Uncle. You know it yourself, Rachel. Now stop sounding like a circus organ in a rainstorm. I can't say that I blame her, Mr. Young Gosh. ladies are not talking to strangers. Oh, for the love of heaven. And what strangers is... are not talking to young ladies. Get out of here, Rachel. Get out. All right, Uncle, yes. yes. <laughs> there is a good pigeon. So you're Joe Aganjanik, huh? Yeah. The big boss. The big fist. The biggest fist that ever threw a ten-gallon cask. Who are you? The name. You talk to the girl. Why? Take it easy, Marty Joe. Just relax. We're here asking questions because, well, I'm a writer. Uh. Did I want? Yeah, sure, that's it. I'm interested in wineries, that's all. <laughs> so I got your neck, a fool, no? <laughs> a writer, eh? A real writer. Well, I'm just a... Uh, Valley Sunset has never been honored before, Mr... Uh, uh, Valentine, this is Miss Brooks. Uh, <laughs> forgive my overalls. So much dirt in the hands is bad, and dirt in the eyes is worse, but... A little dirt in the soul is good, huh? Don't you think? Come again? Yeah, there is music, Mr. Valentine. Music inside of a man who lifts the dirt and tends the vines. This is something to write about. Yeah, I can imagine. I will show you the poem. I will show you the poem in the magazine of my boy, my own boy. Your boy? Silvio, my baby brother. <laughs> yes, my very baby brother. I read from a baby. Yeah. These others, they were the name, but they are nothing. <laughs> What's the matter? You think I am crazy, old farmer? No. No, I don't, Joe. Oh, then you stay. You will visit the Valley Sunset, huh? You sure we wouldn't be in the way, Joe? You sure there's nothing else special going on? <laughs> what is important in life, Mr. Valentine? Death? No, no, no. Beauty. Yeah. Who cares about anything else? Ah, you will stay, huh? Mr. Agashinek, you couldn't keep us away. Uh, but the first one thing to show you. The poem here. My Silvio's poem. You can tell me. You are a writer. Uh, let me see it, George. Uh, he has had everything, Silvio. There must be someone to say these things that I feel that the earth feels. Nuts. I'll show you how the earth feels. Hey, what am I? Silvio. Let me smell your breath. Oh, dry up, Grandmother. I just don't want them to know how bad it is. That's all. Oh. Well, you don't have to. Yes, yes, I do. Yes, I do, Goddess. I do. It stinks. I'm smart enough to know that. But I'm also smart enough to be pretty good at cards and pretty good at women and pretty well, good... No, no, please, Silvio. <laughs> excuse him. Excuse me. Excuse me? Why should anybody excuse me? Who excuses you? Do you know what this old woman did this morning, Mr. Valentine? He fixed it so I can't leave it. Be quiet. Be quiet. <laughs> Young people must be guarded from trouble. Trouble? <laughs> trouble? <laughs> That's the funny part, Mr. Valentine. It's he who's in trouble. Silvio. Sure. Sure. The little man is out there now, big brother. He's waiting in his car to see you. Uh, why did not you say so? Uh, uh, excuse me, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Look at the lion run. Look at him. And oh, for a man not five feet tall, without any hair and a pale, freckled face. Suppose you clear that up, Buster. Who is the little man? What's going on here? What kind of trouble is Joe in? How should I know, Ryder? I'm just baby brother. I don't know any little man who carries a gun. Hey, look, your name is Demetro, isn't it? Yes, of course, Mr. Valentine, but I'm busy right now. My uncle goes to town on Mondays, and I've got to see him first. Joseph? Well, I think he's talking to some man outside. I don't care. I've got to see him first. Well, it's just that Silvio suggests... Silvio's a loafer. He doesn't know a wine vat from a pickle barrel. Only, uh, why don't you two tell the truth? You're not interested in wineries. You're interested in us. Look, all we want. Sure, sure, I know. You're friends of Rachel's. Okay. Well, I'm not afraid to tell you what's going on. Joe sold some property. Oh? Well, what's that got to do? Family property. It belongs to all of us. It's like selling a hand. Only a few days ago, Joe goes out on the QT to raise himself 20,000 bucks. And it, it... Get back to the fields. Get back out to the fields where you belong. Now, wait a minute, Uncle. I am head of this family. You will do what Joe says. And I wanted to ask you... I do not have to explain to you anything. It is my family, mine. One of the boys was cleaning your car up. There's dried blood on it. Hey, hey cut it out. Oh, George, stop him. Hey. But George, you kill him. Oh, dear. Get off, you crazy fool. You kill him. Get off him. Stop him. Stop him. Stop him, Uncle Joseph. Rachel, get out of here. Uncle, he's gone. He's gone. Get out of here, pigeon. This is no place. Shut up, boy. What did you say, kid? What's the matter? He's gone, Mr. Valentine. It's Silvio. He's run away. No. No. Silvio can go. He knows what would happen. It was fixed so he can't run away. No, he hasn't. Silvio. Silvio, where are you? We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. If you spend a little more money than you'd planned on for your summer vacation, you may want to tighten up the family budget. So let me tell you how RPM motor oil helps you economize. It's as simple as this. Engineers have proved that 80% of internal engine wear starts when your car is standing idle. It's the result of acid-laden moisture forming on cylinder walls the moment you cut the ignition. But the cause of this 80% of wear, known as internal engine rust, never even gets started when you use RPM. This premium quality motor oil contains an adhering agent, one of several compounds added to RPM. Because it's compounded, RPM keeps a moisture-proof oil film on cylinder walls and other vital parts, puts a stop to that high-cost corrosive wear. No wonder RPM is so popular. In fact, it's first choice in the West. Depend on RPM, the oil that stops 80% of engine wear. Get RPM at standard stations... And at independent Chevron gas stations, where they say and mean, we take better care of your car. Now back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine, Valley Sunset where the heat and dust of September stretch for miles and miles over the vineyards of Joe Agagenic. You call yourself a visiting curious writer, but you still have a hard time finding out about the strange old-fashioned family that lives there, the Agagenics, whose apparent love of the soil is only exceeded by their hatred of each other. Well, Brooksy, the big boy's left for Fresno. What? Yeah, Joseph, business at the bank or something goes every Monday. So we can look around his room all we want. Well, George, how's Demetro? Oh, no bones broken or anything after that beating he took. But... Well, what was the matter with Joseph? He was insane. Oh, I with... don't know, Angel, but the big guy's so upset he doesn't know what he's doing. See, George. Huh? What I found in the wastebasket. What is it? It says, Dear Joe. Yeah, let me see that. 
George, it's a goodbye note from Sylvia. Yeah. Dear Joe, so long, big brother. You'll never see me again. I've taken the $500 emergency payroll money you keep in your desk. You will never see it again, either. Signed, Silvio. Oh. Well, so he stole some money before he went. But it's only $500, and it doesn't hey, tell us no, about... No, 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 Brooksy. Wait, look at that note again. The wording, the crude sentences, misspelling. But, George... Yeah, yeah, look on this other stuff. Old invoices. And the ledge is the same. It's all the same handwriting, Angel. Joe's handwriting. Yeah. He wrote that farewell note to himself. Yeah, but, but why? Think about it, Brooksy. It's just possible that the light is finally rising on Valley Sunset. Mr. Simpson, you represent the law in this country, and uh, fried blood on a friend, it could mean hit and run, couldn't it? Mr. Valentine, a hard hand named a Sudsy was wandering around on the highway. Didn't know what hit him. Didn't you check around, Sheriff? Yeah, would have, but up comes Joe Gadgenick. Says it must have been him. Remembered hitting something. Okay, okay. So Joe Gadgenick hit a guy named Sudsy. That's all there was to it. Wasn't there any trouble, any charges preferred? Why should there be? Everybody knows Joe. Oh, maybe he paid the hospital bills and bought Sudsy a few cigars. We kept it quiet. A few cigars. Would all that cost as much as $20,000? $20,000? All right, then try this one. Is Sudsy by any chance a little guy not five feet tall without any hair and a pale, freckled face? A little man who might carry a gun? No. <laughs> oh, Mr. Simpson, you're a well of information. Take it easy, take it easy. Who works for him, though? Huh? Ty Wendell's the little guy, Guy Suds he works for. Ty Wendell, huh? Mm-hmm. But he's got a permit for the gun. Owns a little roadhouse out here to shake the yokels. <laughs> nice guy. You don't like him? Oh, I knock over his slot machines once a month. Best I've ever been able to do. Why? Got any ideas? Ah, slot machine. <laughs> How's your luck? Three lemons. <laughs> oh, well. Mr. Wendell... Hey, Mr. Wendell. Mr. Wendell, where? Three lemons for you, too, huh? But didn't you see anyone, George? Oh, no, no, I didn't. But, Angel, the guy's pockets were inside out. His wallet was missing, only he still had on his watch and a diamond ring. Well, George, uh, Ty Wendell had lots of enemies who might have... Sure, been... sure, and I hope that's just the way it is. But I can't help remembering that lots of people wouldn't be knowing about a certain $20,000. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't want to talk to Simpson until I know where that dough is, what it was for. Because if things are what they seem to be, then the murderer was figuring on a perfect crime. And, Brooksy, there's only one way to break it. Oh, George. Yeah. It's to break a heart. Hello, Joe. I've been waiting for you. Is he home, Mr. Valentine? Has he come home? Silvio? No. But this car here on the drive, is that Mr. Simpson? Uh, yeah, yeah. He just stopped by for a visit, that's all. You're pretty late getting back from Fresno. I stop on the road and talk to a friend. Uh-huh. I guess you're pretty used to seeing the sheriff's car around here, aren't you? Why not? Valley Sunset is a small world. I guess you're used to seeing lots of police cars. Mr. Valentine, please, I am very tired. I guess your brother is almost always in trouble, isn't he? Please, please, no. Now, listen to me, Joe. A week ago, a guy named Sudsy was smacked on the road. It was hit and run until you showed up to take the blame for it, to hush it up. Get away from that door. But you don't drink. You're not careless. 
You would have known what you hit. It was Sylvia, wasn't it? He was the one who could have been nailed for drunk and reckless hit one, prison, everything else. I'm going I in. said, listen to me. I just wanted to know one thing, Joe. Did the guy Suds he worked for figure it out, Ty Wendell? He's a crook anyway, Joe. Did he come around to you to ask for blackmail for $20,000? Uh, yeah, Mr. Valentine, I gave Ty Wendell his cash this morning. Yeah. yeah, I was afraid it was that way. It was the only way. But selling some vineyards to raise the money, like my arm, piece of my soul. Yeah, that's why you finally got tough with the boy, isn't it? Uh, you said you fixed it so Silvio couldn't run away. How else could I make something with such clay? The boy will come back, Mr. Valentine. You will see. Joe Agachenek will make a man of him. A poet of him. The things I cannot express, my baby. Hold it, Joe. The way you fixed it. I read that letter you wrote to yourself in your wastebasket. Of course. I must show Silvio the words that I wanted, the words for him to write. Hey, wait a minute. You made him write a letter just like it? He confessed to a crime he did not commit, to stealing money from my desk. So any time he decided to leave, you could also bring him back by mailing his letter to yourself, showing it to the police so they'd be your bloodhounds. He knew I would do it. Joe does not lie. He knew I would mail it from Fresno. Yeah, but did you mail it? I do not lie. The first thing this afternoon by special delivery. The first thing this afternoon. And a guy can't be in two places at once. So nobody would ever suspect Silvio of... Joe can raise fines. Joe will protect his baby. Now look, you got to understand something, Joe. you got to understand it before tomorrow morning when that mailman comes. There's a time when things happen you can't protect him from. You can't use that oh, letter to... You are a fool, a fool. The world is a fool. I got the letter. What? The man I talked to on the road, the special delivery... He has given me the letter. Already, Joe worked fast. He takes care of his baby. Hey, Joe, Uncle. Sheriff Simpson's inside asking questions. He wants to know where you were early this afternoon. He wants to know where Silvio was early this afternoon. Huh? Why does he ask about Silvio? Demetrio, don't tell him. He's out of his mind. Don't tell him yet. What about early this afternoon? Hey, take it easy. He's just asking questions, that's all. Ty Wendell has been murdered. Ty... This afternoon. No. No. No, not my Silvio. Not my baby. Silvio, Joe will take care of you. Joe will kill Penny's home again, huh, Silvio? Sure, Mr. Valentine. Hello, goddess. They located me in San Francisco. With the bad news. Yeah. Yeah. Too bad the stroke he had. Joe was pretty rough on people, though. Mm Mm-hmm. You talked to Mr. Simpson yet? Uh, No, no. But I will. Ty Wendell got us, hmm? That's right. Early yesterday afternoon. Yeah. Well, that's the way it goes. I uh, thought I'd better tell you something before you talk to Simpson. Your brother mentioned he'd given Wendell somebody something like $20,000 in cash. You see, I found the body. The money wasn't on Wendell. Oh, oh I get it. Uh, motive robbery. Well, we had a funny thought that probably nobody knew about that money except Joe. And maybe you. Oh, did you? Well, it's just a thought. A guy who wanted to leave Valley Sunset but could never squeeze enough dough out of his brother might have been tempted by 20000 <laughs> Well, it just shows how funny thoughts can be, doesn't it? Well, I'll I'll go down and talk to Simpson as soon as I do a little straightening up. You mean looking around, don't you? Like for a letter, maybe? Yeah, maybe. I know there is one someplace in Joe's coat, probably. How do you know? A mailman happened to mention it. He'd given it to Joe last night. Happened to mention it. What did you do, check with him on the phone before you flew back? Worth doing, I guess. Make a perfect alibi, that letter. <laughs> Look, what's all this to you, writer? That is, it would if you could find it. What? You haven't got that letter, have you? You didn't take it off it, Joe. Why do you think your brother had that stroke? What? What do you mean? Where's that letter? I've got to have it. I've got to have it. Just underestimated, Joe, that's all. 
He's dead because he realized he failed you. He loved you, Silvio. And last night, even before I met him, he'd already torn that letter up. No. No! I don't believe it. I don't believe that. You have no alibi, baby. No alibi at all. When the dust lies on the grapevine so thick, you can't tell what's underneath. Whether there's ripening fruit or a rattlesnake asleep in the hot shade. Hey, Rachel, look, kid. Snap out of it, will you? We gotta leave you now. I'm all right, Mr. Valentine. Of course you are, Rachel. Now you'll do all the things you want to. You'll swim in the irrigation ditches and go to the football games. It's poetic, isn't it? Huh? What I mean is... Maybe I could say some of those things Uncle Joseph thought should be said. The vines and the earth and... Rachel, I think you can do it. And Demetra will take care of the vines. Poetry, beauty, and grapes. You know, Angel, I think Joe is going to have the kind of monument he'd like. What's the weather going to be like tomorrow? Now, there's a frequent household question, and curiously enough, it's a question that Standard of California asks nearly every day in the year. They want to know what the weather's going to be like in your locality tomorrow and months from tomorrow. It's all part of making Chevron Supreme gasoline a climate-tailored fuel for your car. Yes, this premium-quality gasoline is specially blended for the different altitude and temperature zones throughout the West. And it's also tailored according to the season. That means the year-round and wherever you drive in the West, you can be sure of your car's peak performance under every driving condition. Try a tank full of Chevron Supreme gasoline tomorrow. You'll notice right away how its ping-free power gives faster starts, faster pickup in traffic, and smoother power on hills. You can't buy a better gasoline for today's high-compression engines. Get Chevron Supreme at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say, and mean... We take better care of your car. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here is Robert Bailey. This year's nationwide polio epidemic is the most disastrous in our history. Money set aside to pay for care of victims is being used up at the rate of $100,000 a day. Without your help, this fund will be exhausted in two weeks. So help America's children today. Send your dimes and dollars to Polio, care of your post office. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Francis Robinson as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Also heard in the cast were Jane Webb as Rachel, Bill Conrad as Joe, Tony Barrett as Silvio, Joe Duvall as Simpson, and Clayton Post as Demetro. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. (laughs) 